Here's our testing apparatus. It's a thick canvas heavy bag on a Pell base, which has been lashed to keep it in some form of alignment with that base, but still allowing for movement. The male is held to the bag by large safety pins, also with some degree of flex, trying to replicate at least a little bit like hanging off of someone's body. It is a top heavy arrangement, like a person in armor, but is a little bit suboptimal. We may revisit this test in the future with um, a more scientific approach. The male we're testing here is 8mm dome riveted mild steel links, and then later on we also tested some 8mm dome riveted mild with solid flat rings interspersed. It's the traditional, um, I believe it's called 4-in-1 pattern. Alright, so second test, uh, we're using the same 8mm um, round riveted male. Okay. Uh, so again, this is like a mid quality. I've got a higher quality we'll put up in a minute. Um, this is a boar spear. Um, camera. So it does have a strong central ridge. Um, diamond, diamond cross section. Is that getting in focus? Mm -hmm. Diamond cross section on the tip. We are going to do two blows. Uh, blow number one is going to be a sliding hand thrust, um, so sliding hand thrust. Flow number two is going to be fixed, um, but floating, and our final strike will be a couched thrust. Alright, here we go. No significant penetration. Um, obviously, that displaced the person. That was a lot of force. Uh, we'd be looking at broken ribs or something, but um, not getting through the mail. So now we're going to place a fixed thrust right here, but with floating arms. <laughs> we do have a broken link here. Um, Minimal penetration. This so this is a canvas facing as well. Minimal penetration. Um, I think that even just a regular linen arming doublet. Um, do you want to? you unzip it? A regular linen arming doublet like this uh, is going to survive that blow, but her, her ribs might be broken underneath. So the final thrust is going to be from a couched position. I've got one hand under. I'm going to go one hand over uh, as with uh, the strike from Posta Breve. Um, we're going to put it right in the center of this um, male and, and see if we can break it. Okay, so uh, we're going to replicate the couch thrust. We dropped it um, on the first one. Um, our rationale, if we're ascribing one, is the idea that you can't step backwards in the line or that other people are going to prevent you from moving backwards, just the mass of bodies. Um, and so we're going to deliver a couch thrust back by this year. Um, and we're going to see if we can break it then. Fiore says that uh, the spear is used at the beginning of battle. A um, couple of thoughts. Breaking our way through a light infantry screen, using them uh, to just to bridge that final distance between heavy infantry lines and maybe getting like an incidental kill. Um, or we'll see if in this setup we're actually able to penetrate mail with uh, the spear. Um, so we'll try this out. Couch. Oh, yeah, that's a load. Uh, that is the largest thing we were able to produce uh, so far. We're looking at an inch and a half in width, uh, which would correspond to about that much penetration on the spear. Um, and we, we cut links. There are several, at least two links have burst, uh, and there's deformation all around it. So that's through. So one thing we want to consider, um, you know, with the use of pole arms, especially because it's a bridging, you know, a bridging weapon, like to get close, um, that your opponent may actually be moving towards you, so they'll have forward momentum. So when you're stabbing them, whether you're just couching and receiving the charge, or you are running at them, and especially if you're wearing 
what, you're 165 pounds and you're wearing 45 pounds of harness and you run just and drive that thing into someone, it's gonna, it's gonna, I mean, we see a people that way people bend fetters when they yeah. mutually. So we could be looking at two people meeting with that kind of force um, and even greater penetration. Just as a quick note, this is fileable soft. There is essentially no edge deformation from passing through the mail. Uh, same thing for the dagger that we used earlier. Here's a side view of the spearhead so you can see how quickly it expands from the tip uh, coming back into some hollow ground cutting edges. And then here's a final view of the spear where you can see the flattened diamond cross section right there at the tip.